The Battle of the North Cape was a Second World War naval battle which occurred on December 26, 1943, as part of the Arctic Campaign. The German battleship Scharnhorst, on an operation to attack Arctic convoys of war materiel from the Western Allies to the Soviet Union, was brought to battle and sunk by the Royal Navy, the battleship HMS Duke of York with cruisers and destroyers including an onslaught from the destroyer Nam stored of the exiled Royal Norwegian Navy, off Norway's North Cape. Scharnhorst encountered Burnett's Force 1 shortly after 9 o'clock. Belfast was the first ship to obtain radar contact on Scharnhorst, and the British cruisers rapidly closed the range. At a distance of nearly 13,000 yards, 12,000 meters, the British cruisers opened fire and Scharnhorst responded with her own salvos. While no hits were scored on the British ships, the German battleship was struck twice, with one shell destroying the forward seated radar controls and leaving Scharnhorst virtually blind in a mounting snowstorm. Without radar, gunners aboard the German battleship were forced to aim at the enemy's muzzle flashes. This was made more difficult because two of the British cruisers were using a new flashless propellant, leaving Norfolk the least difficult target. Bay, believing he had engaged a battleship, turned south in an attempt to distance himself from the pursuers and perhaps draw them away from the convoy. Scharnhorst's superior speed allowed Bay to shake off his pursuers, after which he turned northeast in an attempt to circle round them and attack the undefended convoy. Burnett, instead of giving chase in sea conditions that were limiting his cruiser speed to 24 knots, 28 miles per hour, 44 kilometers per hour, correctly guessed Bay's intentions and positioned Force 1 so as to protect the convoy. It was a decision that he had some personal doubts about as it would result in the cruisers losing contact with Scharnhorst and the decision was criticized by some of the British force's other officers but supported by Fraser. To Burnett's relief, shortly after noon, Scharnhorst was once again detected by the cruiser's radars as it attempted to approach the convoy. As fire was again exchanged, Scharnhorst scored two hits on Norfolk with 11-inch shells, disabling a turret and her radar. Burnett's destroyers were also unable to get close enough to Scharnhorst to launch a torpedo attack on the German ship. Following this exchange, Bay decided to return to port, while he ordered his destroyers to attack the convoy at a position reported by the U-boat earlier in the morning. The reported position was out of date, and the destroyers missed the convoy. Scharnhorst ran south for several hours, once again taking advantage of its superior speed. Burnett pursued, but both Sheffield and Norfolk suffered engine problems and were forced to drop back leaving the outgunned Belfast as the sole pursuer and dangerously exposed for a while. The lack of working radar aboard Scharnhorst prevented the Germans from taking advantage of the situation, allowing Belfast to reacquire the German ship on her radar set. Unbeknownst to Bay, his ship was now sailing into a trap, with Admiral Fraser's main force steaming towards Scharnhorst's position and perfectly placed to intercept the fleeing German ship. With Belfast sending a constant stream of radio signals on the Scharnhorst's position, the battleship Duke of York battled through the rough seas to reach the German ship. Fraser sent his four escorting destroyers to press ahead and try to get into torpedo launching positions. The main British force soon picked up Scharnhorst on radar at 1615 and were maneuvering to bring a full broadside to bear. At 1617 Scharnhorst was detected by Duke of York's Type 273 radar at a range of 45,500 yards, 41,500 meters, and by 1632 Duke of York's Type 284 radar indicated that the range had closed to 29,700 yards, 27,700 meters. At 1648, Belfast fired star shells to illuminate Scharnhorst. Scharnhorst, unprepared with her turrets trained fore and aft, was clearly visible from Duke of York. Duke of York opened fire at a range of 11,920 yards, 10,900 meters, and scored a hit on the first salvo, disabling Scharnhorst's foremost turrets, Anton and Bruno, while another salvo destroyed the ship's aeroplane hangar. They turned north, but was engaged by the cruisers Norfolk and Belfast and turned east at a high speed of 31 knots, 36 miles per hour, 57 kilometers per hour. 
Scharnhorst was now being engaged on one side by Duke of York in Jamaica while Burnett's cruisers engaged from the other side. The Germans took continuing heavy punishment from Duke of York's 14-inch shells, and at 1724 a desperate bay signaled to Germany and surrounded by heavy units. Bay was able to put some more distance between Scharnhorst and the British ships to increase his prospects of success. Two 11-inch shells from one of her salvos passed through the masts of the Duke of York, severing some of the wireless aerials, and, more serious still, knocking over the radar aerial to the Type 284 gunnery control radar set. These hits could not have been known to Bay, and Lt. H.R.K. Bates RNVR, the electrical officer, despite the appalling conditions, a Force 8 gale, darkness and substantial ice, Scharnhorst's fortunes took a dramatic turn for the worse at 1820 when a shell fired by Duke of York at extreme range pierced her belt armor and destroyed the number one boiler room. Scharnhorst's speed dropped to only 10 knots, 12 miles per hour, 19 kilometers per hour, and though immediate repair work allowed it to recover to 22 knots, 25 miles per hour, 41 kilometers per hour, Scharnhorst was now vulnerable to torpedo attacks by the destroyers. Five minutes later, Bay sent his final radio message to the German naval command, we will fight on until the last shell is fired. 11. At 1850 Scharnhorst turned to starboard to engage the destroyer Savage in Saumarez, but this allowed Scorpion and the Norwegian destroyer Stord to attack with torpedoes, scoring two hits on the starboard side. As Scharnhorst continued to turn to avoid the torpedoes, Savage and Saumarez scored three hits on her port side. Saumarez was hit several times by Scharnhorst's secondary armament and suffered 11 killed and 11 wounded. Due to the torpedo hits, Scharnhorst's speed again fell to 10 knots, 12 miles per hour, 19 kilometers per hour, allowing Duke of York to rapidly close the range. With Scharnhorst illuminated by starshells hanging over her like a chandelier, 13, Duke of York and Jamaica resumed fire, at a range of only 10,400 yards, 9,500 meters. At 1915, Belfast joined in from the north. The British vessel subjected the German ship to a deluge of shells, and the cruisers Jamaica and Belfast fired their remaining torpedoes at the slowing target. Scharnhorst's end came when the British destroyers Opportune, Virago, Musketeer and Matchless fired a further 19 torpedoes at her. Racked with hits and unable to flee, Scharnhorst finally capsized and sank at 1945 on 26 December, her propeller still turning, at an estimated position of 72 degrees 16 and 28 degrees 41 e. She was later identified and filmed at 72 degrees 31 and 28 degrees 15 e. Of her total complement of 1,968, only 36 were pulled from the frigid waters, 30 by Scorpion and 6 by Matchless. Neither Rear Admiral Bay nor Captain Hinsey were among those rescued, although both were reported seen in the water after the ship sank, nor were any other officers. Scorpion tried to rescue Bay but he foundered. British casualties, 